So I recently got a comment from one of my subscribers that really struck a note with me because it's something that I used to think about all the time and to some extent I still do. It's something that we face when you want to dress up in a world that doesn't anymore. Unless you're in one of very few professions, men are already required to wear formal garments, to wear a suit unless you're going to like a wedding or a funeral. But for those of us that enjoy that feeling of being a little bit extra dressed up and we think that that type of clothing looks good on us, it's not enough opportunities. So I'm going to read you the comment that I got and then I'm going to talk about two approaches that I think can help you overcome any fears, any hesitations that you might have about dressing in this way and how you can do it while still feeling like you blend in adequately with the rest of society so people don't accuse you of being overdressed or thinking that you're better than them. Let me read you the comment. This is from loofloof1441. I would love to see a video on how to wear elegant clothes more casually. Where I live, people don't really wear suits, even businessmen. So walking around with a suit feels odd. So I totally understand where he is coming from here and it's definitely something that I've thought about a lot. There are mainly two approaches that I take towards this and the first one is like this. I would think about the way that people typically dress in a given situation. Let's say you're going to a restaurant. Maybe you've never been there before, but maybe you go on Google and you see how the people that go to that restaurant are typically dressed. You know, every social situation has some kind of uncommunicated dress code where most people are falling within some kind of category of formality. And with a restaurant, this might differ depending on the type of place that it is. But let's just say, for example, that most people in the restaurant wear jeans and a t-shirt. What I would do in this case, if you want to dress up a little bit, is I would just take things one notch above what everybody else is doing. So in this case, it might be wearing a pair of jeans still, but wearing a Oxford cloth button down shirt. And let's say you're going to presume the majority of people there will be wearing sneakers. Maybe you wear a pair of boots. It's not going to look overly formal, but it's definitely more dressed up. If you're into this lifestyle of menswear, then it's going to make you feel better about yourself. But what you always want to avoid is just feeling self-conscious about the style choices that you've made and you don't want to get looks for the wrong reason. So I think just going one notch above in formality of other people is a great way to kind of adopt this modern gentleman style. You know, I think if you look at James Bond's casual outfits, I think he does this really well. You might be going to work, for for example, in an office where... Uh, the last office I worked in, the guys would all wear chinos and a button-up shirt. Well, what I could do in that situation to stand out is maybe I'd wear a pair of Gurkha trousers. That stands out. Or maybe I would throw on a more casual type of blazer. So by more casual, I mean maybe something with a texture, something that's not so structured. Maybe something that doesn't follow along the typical conservative color palette of navy and khaki. I think when you want to dress up outside of the workplace, but you don't want people to think that you've just come from work, then avoiding those more conservative colors, you know, like the the khaki and the navy can be a good way to show that what you're doing with your style choices is more deliberate. It's for this reason that I personally like the double-breasted jacket myself. So that's one way of doing it. The second approach is probably something that I'm leaning more towards these days. And I'd say I switch back and forth between the two different approaches. But the second way of doing it is really embracing the more formal pieces, but wearing them in a more casual way. So I think it's best that I talk about a couple of specific examples of how you would do that. And every time I say the word sprezzatura, people get angry and people hate that concept. But... I think it is a good way to think about this and what you really want to embrace is this idea of feeling very comfortable, very relaxed in more formal clothes. If you want to feel um, not self-conscious and you want to feel comfortable, then you need to literally be comfortable in the clothes that you're wearing and there are certain choices that you can make that I think will do that. So one of them is that I would recommend going for an Oxford cloth button down or a button down shirt. This one is actually linen 
gonna feel more comfortable than one of those crisp, hard, starchy collars. Especially if you're not wearing a tie, it's definitely not necessary. So I think that's a better option. Where I live, it's really warm. So for me, linen is always an option. Um, you could also go for a seersucker shirt. The fabric, it inherently looks less formal and more relaxed. And it's also a bit more breathable and comfortable. So I think if you live in a climate where it's appropriate or perhaps in the summer, then linen could be a really good swap to make in your shirts. When it comes to the cuffs of the shirts, you wanna go for a button down cuff. And I always just have a habit of leaving these undone. I never seem to do the buttons up on my shirts. A cuff linked shirt, you know, a French cuff is always gonna look more formal. And what you can do more easily when you don't have to worry about cuff links or double cuffs is that you can just roll up your sleeves. Doing this on a shirt is always gonna make it look more formal. And I think for the majority of men, a long sleeve shirt rolled up actually looks more flattering to your body and to your forearms than having it fully down. A good way to introduce some accessories like a tie in a less formal way is to go for textures. So for example, a knitted tie is inherently less formal than a silk tie. And I think there's also just something about the, the texture and the fabric and the feeling of a knit tie that feels a bit more approachable. I think sometimes when you dress in this way, you can come across as inapproachable or sorry unapproachable um, sometimes people might think that you are in a certain profession and they don't want to approach you because of your status or maybe they might interpret the way that you've chosen to dress as a way that you don't want to be approached and you don't want to mix with other people because you've unconsciously signaled with your clothes that you separate yourself from the rest of the group so something like a knitted tie or a knitted sweater it just has a bit more approachability to it it looks more friendly so for a ties, I think knitted is a great option. I know this comment was specifically about suits, but I think a better alternative to a suit is to wear blazers and odd trousers. Not only will this give you more color combinations, but it also looks less formal. You can have a little bit more fun with this. As I said before, I think a double breasted blazer looks a lot more like a deliberate style choice than something that you have to wear for a specific reason. And although technically they are on the same level of formality, I think there's definitely a, uh, a cool factor, a nonchalance and an elegance to the double-breasted that makes it preferable if you're going for this type of style to the single-breasted. But it does depend on your individual preference and certain styles of jacket might look better on other people. If you like to go for a suit, then maybe ditch the conventional advice about buying a navy and a charcoal suit and sticking to the more muted colors first. Maybe you wanna go for something like an earth tone, something like a brown. Um, if you live somewhere that's warmer, then maybe you wanna go for a stone color. You'll find that it's easier to wear these suits with more casual pieces. Like you could totally wear a brown suit with a white t-shirt and some bracelets. And I think that would look more natural than somebody who is doing the same thing with a dark navy single breasted suit. When it comes to your shoes, I would also avoid the more classic traditional types of men's dress shoes, like the Darbys, the Oxfords, even Brogues I would hesitate to go for. If you wanna go for a leather dress shoe, then I think a double monk strap is a really cool, sophisticated option that you don't see that many guys wearing. Personally, I go for loafers a lot of the time. I find them the most comfortable. I enjoy wearing the look without socks and having the cropped trousers slightly. So that definitely creates another level of informality. I mean, you definitely wouldn't turn up to a funeral wearing loafers and no-show socks. So I love loafers. You can get them in suede as well, which again creates this soft texture, looks a little bit less cold, less austere, more approachable. Um, boots are also a great option. Perhaps you live somewhere where it's cooler and you need to opt for boots. Um, a Chelsea boot, I don't think you can go wrong with that. It's gonna go great with everything from your jeans to your suits. Chucker boots, again, I really like. And you could also go for sneakers. If you enjoy wearing sneakers with a suit or with your blazer and chinos, I think white, uh, clean sneakers are the best option. You could also go for those pairs that have 
a leather top as well, just to avoid like the running shoes, the gym shoes, the Jordans, even something like uh, Air Force Ones, I would say is a little bit too chunky to be wearing with formal styles. And I've talked about what I think you should add to the outfit, but there's also an element of what you should take away and what you should deconstruct. You know, my example of leaving the buttons undone on my cuffs is one of those. I often do my pocket square, for example, in kind of a messy way. So this is one way you have the um, the perimeter of the square is, is blue. And I have folded it in a way that you can see all of the edges there. Um, it looks a bit less formal than if I'd folded like a white pocket square straight across. You can also roll up the sleeves, you could undo the buttons on your shirt, you could leave straps loose, you could choose not to push your belt all the way through um, the belt loops on your trousers. You can also introduce some more casual accessories, something like a bracelet, maybe like a necklace, maybe you like to wear some statement rings. Um, I would always go for a watch unless you're deliberately choosing not to wear a watch for that given day. And when it comes to your personal styling as well, this can play a factor. I think your hairstyle and your grooming can make the difference between you looking conservative and a little too stuffy in a suit to looking super cool. So I would go for a less conservative hairstyle. Whatever you find that suits you or works for you is okay. I'm not telling you to get one particular hairstyle or the other because everybody's face shape is different. But I would pick out a hairstyle that you enjoy on somebody else you think that they have some similar features and face shape to you and you know go to a good barber and show him that photo and you can work towards that together when it comes to your facial hair having a little uh, five-day beard or some stubble might look a bit less formal than being clean shaven so if you want to create a bit more of a, a rugged and relaxed appearance with your formal pieces then not being overly concerned about everything being prim and proper in terms of your overall appearance can help create this overall picture of a more relaxed and nonchalant guy. But obviously it's important that it's only the appearance that looks like you're not that bothered. You need to take care of yourself. You need to get your hair cut regularly, regardless of the style you're going for. You need to take care of your facial hair, even if you are going for that three to four or five day beard look. And a final big part of this is really about your attitude. You know, there can be this conception if you wear the guy who's wearing suits, if you're the guy who's going around wearing double-breasted blazers and loafers, where people might think that you're, um, you think you're better than them. People might think you have some kind of superiority complex or you're kind of unapproachable. But it's very easy to get rid of this myth just with your own personality. I personally have a little bit of a resting bitch face and I've really tried to deliberately smile at strangers and to show that I'm a friendly and warm person despite however I might choose to dress. Um, so I think it's really important to have this kind of charming and relaxed and soothing personality around other people that makes them feel comfortable with your own formality because we don't only have to think about do we feel comfortable in our clothes, we have to think do the other people around us feel comfortable with how we are dressing. So to sum it up, I would say there are some must-haves if you're looking to dress in a gentlemanly way and in a formal way, but not be too overtly formal and stuffy. I would go for some button-down shirts, absolutely. I would get some odd blazers and odd chinos, maybe go for something like a Gurkha trouser, something with a side adjuster that looks a little bit more sartorial than what the average guy would wear. I would get some knitwear that you can throw on over the top of your shirts. I would get some knitted ties too. When it comes to your footwear, I'd pick up a bunch of loafers, some boots, some double monks if you prefer the more formal look. And then I would grab hold of some accessories, a few different pocket squares, perhaps some bracelets, a couple of different watches that you can interchange. If you're into rings and jewelry, again, that can bring the formality grade of this overall aesthetic down. I hope this has been a useful video to you guys. It's definitely something that I still think about a lot and I'd still say I'm on that journey. There are some people that totally reject society's impression of them and decide that they are just gonna dress however they want. Um, that's not personally the approach that I take. I think that it's important to consider other people's feelings and the message that you are sending to other people with your clothes. But if you agree with me, then I hope that you have found some of the suggestions useful and I would love to know in the comments, maybe you can tell me about a typical day-to-day -day outfit for you that feels sufficiently formal and stylish for you, but comfortable enough to be in the rest of the world and to feel like you blend in just the right amount and stand out just the right amount.